Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Good morning to the colleagues here around me, the CF president and our president, uh, SAFE, all the EB members who are online, all the national association, all the people of the media and all the hockey family. Good morning, good afternoon to everybody. It's a pleasure to have you on the second day of the Congress. The Congress today will have the following agenda, which was sent to all of you. We will start with the roll call. We will have the condolences. We have the opening of the president. We have my own report. We have the voting procedure. We have the financial report, which then need to be, and the auditor report, which then needs to be uh, voted and approved by the Congress. Uh, we have an, uh, an appointment of the auditors also, which is a voting item. The membership and suspension item, which was also a voting item. Uh, approval of the, the subscription fee for the National Association. Also here, we will need to vote proposal of alterations of statutes. There are two items which need to be voted on. Uh, and then after this, we will then go into the election uh, or oversight panel report, which you have got sent, which you have read, I'm sure. And then from point 13 on, we will start with the election of the candidates. We will start with the presidential elections then after that point, we will have election of the members of the EB for, for the females. And then we will have the next point will be election of executive board members for men's. After this, we will move to the, to, to the FIH awards. And then we will have any other purposes, any other items. And then we will have the closing remark from our chair, our acting president, and then we will have also address from the new president. So this is uh, the agenda. I wish already now to everybody a good Congress, specifically to the candidates, good luck and a good deliberation. So now without further ado, translation is active. So please, those who need translation, Click on the globe button and you can select your language. If this is done, now we will hand, I will hand over to our independent notary, Mr. Luis Heide van Mond, uh, who will do the roll call for us. Mr. Van Mond, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vale. Um, we are ready here in uh, London to assist you uh, with the, uh, the voting process uh, here at uh, Lumi's offices. Um, I will start uh, by reading out a roll call of those national associations that are currently logged in to the Lumi voting platform. Uh, so we will start with Afghanistan, Algeria, Armenia, Australia, Austria, Bangladesh, Belarus, Belgium, Bermuda, Bolivia, Botswana, Brunei, Bulgaria, Burkina Faso, Cambodia, Cameroon, Canada, Chile, China, Chinese Taipei, Colombia, Costa Rica, Croatia, Cuba, Czech Republic, Dominican Republic, Ecuador, Egypt, England, Estonia, Fiji, Finland, France, Gambia, Georgia, Germany, Ghana, Gibraltar, Greece, Guatemala, Guyana, Haiti, Honduras, Hungary, India, Indonesia, Iran, Italy, Jamaica, Japan, Kazakhstan, Kenya, Korea, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Macau, Macedonia, Malawi, Malaysia, Mauritius, Mexico, Mongolia, Morocco, Myanmar, 
Namibia, Nepal, Netherlands, New Zealand, Nicaragua, Nigeria, Norway, Oman, Pakistan, Panama, Paraguay, Peru, Philippines, Poland, Portugal, Puerto Rico, Romania, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Scotland, Serbia, Seychelles, Singapore, Slovakia, Slovenia, Solomon Islands, South Africa, Spain, Sudan, Swaziland, Sweden, Switzerland, Tajikistan, Tanzania, Thailand, Timor-Leste, Togo, Trinidad and Tobago, Turkey, Turkmenistan, Ukraine, United Arab Emirates, United States of America, Uruguay, Uzbekistan, Venezuela, Vietnam, Wales, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Now, we're just going to refresh the list of um, attending NAs, just in case any may have joined since the uh, since I finished the roll call. So we have uh, a few more to announce. We have Hong Kong, China. We have Cyprus, Malta, Brazil, and Denmark, which at the moment gives us a total of 119 national associations um, logged in to the uh, platform. The other uh, notes that I was going to make at this point was that the um, South Africa Hockey Federation will not be able to vote in the upcoming votes, but can attend the Congress. And secondly, that the Indonesian Hockey Federation will not be able to vote until item number 10 in the agenda if they are elected as a member. So that is the roll call um, complete. Uh, and I will now hand back to Acting President Mr. Saif Ahmed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dear friends, it is my sad duty to inform you that since the last Congress, representative of our sport have passed away. Most of these personalities have made an outstanding contribution to our sport. You can see the names on the screen. We will treasure all of them in our memories. I will kindly request you to sit with your head bound down for a moment of silence. Thank you. <clears throat> dear members of the FIH Congress, dear representative of the media, dear friends in hockey, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to all of you for the second and final day of our 48th Congress. Yesterday, we have had opportunity to discuss uh, through truly about important matters for the growth of our sport under the Stronger Together. And today, we will go for finance, statutes, awards, and election, whatever is decided in the next couple of hours. Unity is and will remain key to successful development and smooth running of our sport. I think it is fair to say, and I believe you will agree with me, that our sport should be bigger and that it has definitely the potential to, to, be, to be so, but Achieving this will only be possible through our united and combined efforts. <clears throat> mm. 
Furthermore, our sports is really as fun, speed, intensity, skills are really exciting sport. So we do have Latin, we do have increased participation and it is our duty. Before I conclude, I like to convey, if you allow me, a message. I want to take this opportunity to extend my sincere thanks for, to my colleague of the executive board, FIH, in giving me the mandate of the act, acting president of FIH since July. I can assure each and every one of you that I have done my best to, con to conduct this mission with dedication and, pa and passion, and always with the best interest of our sports in mind. I wish you a fruitful Congress and thank you all. And last but not least, on behalf of the FIH, I'd like to say to the Continental Federation, the National Association, the committee, the athletes, uh, our commercial and broadcast partner, our preferred supplier, the volunteers, the fans, and everyone within the global hockey community, a hug and sincere thank you for your remarkable commitment and passion. I wish you all the fruitful Congress. Now, the floor is yours. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> now, the floor is there for uh, Terry Will to please continue with the agenda from agenda item number four to agenda item number 11. Thank you, Safe. Thank you, Acting President, uh, for this. I will now briefly run through my report, which is actually uh, a synthesis of the most important elements, a lot of things you have seen already yesterday. So when we're talking about events, events, we must ensure that venues are full, because that gives the, uh, the view of our importance of our sport. We must ensure that at events, fans can watch them, can participate. We need to make our events sustainable. And we need also to make sure that wherever we host events, that there is a clear legacy, specifically in the hosting country. Paris 24, without uh, any doubt, this is the mega uh, element for us coming up 24 in Paris, which is really around the corner. Only 12 teams, men and 12 team women can participate, but it is an importance of, uh, for hockey in general. So I would ask all of you to promote permanently the Olympic Games and our sport to be in the Olympic Games. Hockey 5, we have seen yesterday fantastic videos. This is the way to bring hockey to people. Short for, but urban, appealing to use. Lausanne event was a real highlight. We had a lot of people not knowing about hockey, which were amazed about our sport, and we will continue to do so. So if anybody from the NA is interested to host such a similar event, please contact us. Development, we have a lot of ongoing things. This is our key mission development. We have workshop, we have courses, we have all initiatives. Also, please make sure that you use them and make sure that we can uh, develop further our game. Water free turf, we have seen yesterday, we are in a re extreme good way. We have already timelines there. We have already, together with our partner, Politan, we have already developed a waterless test, which needs further development. But we can say, and we are extremely confident, that the timeline will be kept and the events, as demonstrated yesterday, will be played on a waterless pitch, which we own to the world, because sustainability is the key element uh, in this 
in this given world, which makes completely sense. Resources, uh, to grow our resources, we need more player, we need more participation, we need to do a lot of efforts, we need to promote our games, so that's why uh, Watch Hockey is actually an important element, because this will be uh, an area where people can go, can watch Hockey, it is your platform, it's not FIH platform, it is the Hockey platform, so please also there use it and put your videos on and use it for your local games and to provide more content and to provide access to your fans. We also created the Hockey Manager game, which has had a fantastic kickoff, and we have more than 2,500 people per day using the game uh, after literally 10 days, which is really, really, really good, and which is also another way of engage with fans. More Digital Connect fan base, uh, as we have shown yesterday, we will provide you from July next year onwards a module for registration of your players. And we will put at your disposal a new team management system for free, which can be used by the Continental Federation, by the National Association, and by the clubs in those national associations. Because what we need is we need Digital Connect audience because this is what our sponsors are looking for and that will help us actually to generate more revenue and when we saying we want to generate more revenue is for one good reason is to put this revenue into development and to help our sport. I think that is a quick synthesis of my report uh, but that definitely despite all those elements what we will not forget about is our values. Uh, we will maintain our values, which are actually the respect, which are the fair play, and which are the family community, that those values are still key to us and will be always upfront in everything what we are doing. That concludes my report. Let me inform you that whoever wants to speak during Congress should use the Q&A chat function uh, to post their question and then we will read them and then we will answer them if it is possible. So please use the chat function if you have any question or remark during the Congress. So now I will hand over to our independent notary, uh, Mr. Hide Van Mond, to, uh, to him to explain the voting procedure. Uh, and we will then straight away conduct uh, three test votes to make everybody comfortable so that ever, everybody has had the chance to, to have some tests before we going into the different votes, as I mentioned before. So, Mr. Uh, Hide Van Mond, please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vale. Um, so, yes, there, there will be a number of votes will be held during this part of the Congress. Uh, Lumi and I uh, will be assisting you with these. Um, depending on the nature of the vote, um, the FIH statutes uh, provide for different voting majorities to be used. Um, for clarity, I'll just briefly set out the different majorities for you now. So the statutes define a special majority as being more than three quarters of those online which means those logged into the Lumi voting system at the time of the vote and who are entitled to vote. In a special majority, any abstentions, spoiled or blank votes are counted in the overall total votes. The next category is absolute majority, which is defined as more than one half of those online. Again, those logged into the Lumi voting system at the time of the vote and entitled to vote. So in this case, if there is an even number of members online, an absolute majority would be 50% plus one. And if there is an odd number uh, logged on, it would be 50% plus 0.5. As with special majority, the uh, any abstentions, spoiled or blank votes in an absolute majority vote will be counted in the overall total. Um, and then there is the third category, which is a simple majority, uh, which is simply more than a half of the votes validly cast. And in this case, 
the abstentions, spoiled or blank votes are disregarded. Now, as we go through the voting, uh, each vote, we will make it clear to the uh, voting delegates uh, which form of majority is required. Uh, and the absolute and special majorities will be calculated based on the number of national associations that are online in the Lumi voting system at the time of each specific vote. Therefore, it is very important that the national associations stay connected to the Lumi system in case um, they get disconnected because of network or any power issues, they should inform Lumi using the email address fih at lumiengage.com. Uh, and try to get back online as soon as possible. Um, thank you very much. I think we're, we're just going to go through now those um, additional national associations who may have, who have joined since the roll call was uh, ended. Um, so we have Argentina, Barbados, El Salvador, Qatar, Ireland, Libya, Uganda, Sri Lanka, and Korea DPR. Um, and I think we're just going to, to work out the uh, the total valid votes uh, at the moment based on those logged in and who are eligible to vote is a 126. So for the first test vote, um, we will have 126 as the valid votes possible. Um, we're just going to um, get the first test votes ready for you uh, now. So as you can see on screen. Uh, the first test vote is a simple majority question. Uh, the question is, will the weather be sunny tomorrow? And your options are yes, no, or abstain. Um, so we now declare the vote, the test vote open. Thank you. And just a reminder for those delegates who are voting, you need to be logged into the Lumi platform. The vote will automatically appear on the left hand side of the screen and you simply select your desired response from the three available. Uh, so we're going to keep this test vote open for a further minute while we receive all those outstanding votes. Thank you. So we will just give another uh, 10 seconds or so just to those. I think we still have nine outstanding um, test votes. If you would like to cast your votes now, uh, we'll leave the test open for, say, another 30 seconds just to give people more chance. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We're now closing this first test vote. So we now have the uh, results on screen for the first test vote. Um, total possible votes were 126. We had nine abstentions, 110 valid votes casts. Um, so 87 yes, 23 no. So on the simple majority, that is a clear yes. Thank you. We will now set up the second test vote. So if you just give us a couple of minutes to get that ready, we'll be back on shortly. Thank you.
Okay, we're just um, adding a couple of um, uh, delegations who, who are still joining, and we will be on with the second test shortly. Thank you. So, sorry, my correction, the um, the uh, eligible votes um, still remains at 126, and we're now ready for the um, second test vote. Uh, so the test vote on your screen, number two, please select a maximum of one sport from the below list to elect as the most preferred sport, or you can also choose to abstain from voting. So your two options here are either hockey or football, and the uh, vote is now open. And sorry, just for clarity, this is an absolute uh, majority vote. So this will be an, uh, judged on an absolute majority basis. Thank you. Just a quick reminder for the Malawi delegates, you will be using the Lumi voting platform to vote. Those options will appear on the web page of the Lumi voting platform. Thank you. OK, so we'll just close the vote in, in about 10 seconds time. Okay, the vote is now closed. Okay, so we had um, a total of 126 um, possible votes, um, 121 valid votes cast. The absolute majority required is 64. So from the results, we see that hockey achieved 106 and football 15. So clearly hockey achieved an absolute majority in this vote. Thank you very much. We will now um, set up the third test and we'll be back with you shortly. Okay, so we're now ready for the third test vote, which is now uh, on the screen with you. So the question is, and this is an, another absolute majority um, question, uh, please select a maximum of two candidates for handing over the trophy to the Men's World Cup winner, or you can choose to se select only one, or you may abstain from voting. So in this test vote, you have the option of choosing a maximum of two candidates uh, one candidate, or you may abstain. Uh, the votes, uh, and sorry, just to recap, we are still on 126 um, uh, eligible uh, voting national associations logged in, so that will be the total used to calculate the absolute majority. Uh, the vote is now open. And just a reminder for delegates, for this question, you will need to use the submit button. So you can choose zero, one or two delegates and you will press the submit button in the bottom right of the responses.
As this uh, vote is slightly more complex, we're going to allow plenty of time for people to cast their votes. Uh, we'll allow an, at least another minute or two. Thank you. So we're just waiting for 13 more votes to come in um, of those who are logged in. Uh, we will allow another 30 seconds for this test vote. Thank you. Okay, so we just count down from five seconds now. And the vote is now closed. Thank you. So as you can see the results on screen now, we had 126 possible votes. Um, 114 of those were validly cast. On the absolute majority um, principle, we would the absolute majority needed would be 64. Um, so just reading out the results there, Brad Pitt, 65, Alaya Bat, 25, Leonardo DiCaprio, 32, Shah Rukh Khan, 20, Sandra Bullock, 48, and Hathaway, 27. Uh, so on the basis of this vote, um, Brad Pitt would have achieved an absolute majority and would have filled one of the available um, places. Uh, if we if we if this was a live vote, we would continue to a second round of voting uh, to then select a uh, second uh, member to be uh, to be uh, appointed. Um, but for the purposes of this test vote, we are going to uh, end end this here. Um, we will now uh, I will now hand back to um, Mr. Vale, if I may. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Mont. Uh, thank you, Lumi, for this test. I think quite important. Thank you for this. So please, everybody, all head of delegates, stay connected because we will need you moving forward. We are now moving to point number six, which is financial report and auditor's report. And therefore, I hand over the floor to Diana. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I will uh, present you the main events in 2020-2021, the audited accounts that you have received a copy of, the development projects that we run, and uh, the foundation um, and the risk management. <clears throat> the main events for uh, these two years, uh, of course, it was uh, the Pro League that uh, because of the Corona uh, COVID crisis was extended until June 2021. So actually it was uh, extended by 12 months with 37.5% of the matches eventually canceled even at uh, the end, uh, mid of 2021. 
So this has impacted us uh, pretty much for these two years um, because we received uh, TV and sponsoring income reduced by this 37.5%. Uh, and also the extension to the next year, we practically lost the income of six months in 2021 as well. The Congress 2020 was moved to May 21. The Olympic Games 2020, they were moved to July, August 2021. And that was an important step as well that uh, in the end, the Olympic Games uh, have been achieved successfully. It was very important for the FIAs and for the whole world of sport, I think. The Junior World Cup women were, uh, was uh, moved to May 2022. And the only tournament actually cancelled was the Indoor World Cup. It was postponed to 22, but then cancelled. During this time, we applied for staff technical unemployment from March 2020 to April 2022. And in the beginning, we had 60%, then we decreased 50, 40, 30, 20. In the end, we had only 20% in 22. But this was a very important uh, help for the FIH during these two difficult years. We also got 2 million uh, credit loans in cash that uh, everything was reimbursed in 2022, apart from 500,000, which were from the government without interest. <clears throat> but now we can everything, we can reimburse it anytime if we want. As well, uh, having online meetings, um, online congress, and reduced the office costs and government costs helped us enormously during these two years. The balance sheet at the end of 2021 shows uh, um, 15.29 million Swiss francs with cash, 82%, um, receivable 13%, 4% accrued income and deferred expenses, 0.5% uh, paid prepaid expenses and 0.5 fixed assets. On the liability side, we have 46% equity and reserves, 13% uh, payable. 26% deferred income, 2% accrued expenses, and 13% loan. On the income side, we had 15 million during these two years combined, sponsoring and hosting 26%, and TV 15%. So these two together is 41%. Same percentage as the IOC Olympic Games allocation, 41%. From the manufacturers, we had 13%, and other income 6%. On the expenses side, we had the same amount, 15 million, operational 49%, events 30%, sport and development 19%, and governance 2%. Governance is very low because of all the online meetings that cost us very little. For the Pro League per season, <clears throat> as you know, the season one, 2019, we had a big loss, which we consider it was an investment into this new product. Season two is this season that instead of six months took 18 months. So we had a very small loss, but this is really um, very successful in the end because um, with 37 point, this is the 37.5% of matches and of loss of income, we achieved a very good season in the end. Season three, we have a small profit. It's uh, 129,000 Swiss francs. And for season four, for next 22 to 23, we are budgeting a profit of 150,000 Swiss francs, but we also have a little contingency in there. So actually the profit is a little bit higher. So the pro league, as you can see from one season to the other is getting better. And we hope we can uh, start the next four year cycle much better. The development project during these two years amounted to uh, 2.7 million. 2 million paid directly by the FIH of this 2 million, 1.9 through the Continental Federation. Um, Olympic Solidarity is paying directly uh, to the NAs, but we all with FIH assistance, uh, 680,000 Swiss francs during these two years on 23 projects. And I can tell you that in 22, it's already this amount allocated for Olympic Solidarity, you know, in less than a year. The development grants paid by the FIH for the NAs, but through the Continental Federation per year in US dollars, Africa 181,000, Asia 195,000, Europe 275,000, Oceania 140,000, Panam 195,000 for a total of 986,000 US dollars. So despite the general reduction of uh, income uh, in 2020 and 2021, 
of the FIH, we continued during these two years to pay the same amount to the Continental Federation, so, the, so effectively to the NA for development, and we will continue to pay the same amount in the future, at least the same amount in the future. The foundation at the end of uh, 21 showed 3.7 million in the balance sheet, building its 2.2 million, cash is 0.55, and loan to the FI is 0.95 that we have very much in 22. Um, I have to say that the building is 2.2 million the value in the account, but actually we bought it for 3.5 million and the market value would be around 5 million right now. Uh, it's worth mentioning that we have a very strict risk management. Uh, we report to the executive board at each uh, meeting and all the departments are updating the risk register document that we have. So we keep a very strict control on everything that might happen and what is the impact on the business. That's an important tool for moving forward. So just briefly, the conclusion is 2018, 2019, they were very difficult years. We had some losses, but uh, we had also this investment into the future of the FIA and in the proling. 2021, 2020 and 2021, despite the coronavirus crisis, we managed to be neutral, so we don't have a loss, we don't have a profit. This is a fantastic result for how difficult these two years have been. And 2022 and 2023, we are very happy to announce that we have positive results and um, we hope to continue successfully uh, after the World Cup that took place already this year and the World Cup in India next year, which is also very important for us. Thank you. Thank you, Diana, for this uh, clear report. Uh, also, you have all received and seen the auditor's report, which was have sent uh, be sent to you. There also you see that this is a complete process where we use auditors and they, they check everything what we are doing in a complete transparent way. And you have seen their report and their uh, conclusions, which have been extremely positive. So now I would like to hand over to our notary, uh, Mr. Hitter Vermont, please, uh, for actually the approval of the accounts and the discharge of the executive board. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vale. We're now uh, ready here to conduct the, um, the vote on the approval of the accounts. Um, this will be a simple majority vote. Um, and uh, if we could have the question, oh yes, and just to recap that we are still at um, 126 national associations logged into the Lumi platform and um, eligible to vote. Um, so the question on screen, do you approve the accounts and discharge the executive board of its responsibilities? Uh, you have the options yes, no, or abstain. Um, please um, select one and the vote is now open. <clears throat> so there are 15 seconds you can give us 30 seconds uh, 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 of a minute or a no, minute yeah. so we've got 22 respondents to come Okay. It depends how it goes. Okay, we're just waiting for um ten more uh, votes to come in. So we'll let we'll leave the vote open a little longer just to give everybody plenty of time to vote. Thank you.
Okay, so we just count down from 10 now, and then we'll close the vote. So just 10 more seconds. Okay, the vote is now closed. Thank you. Okay, so we have the results on screen. Um, there were 106, sorry, 126 um, total possible votes. Of those, we received eight abstentions and 110 valid votes cast. Of those, 108 were yes, uh, two were no. So the simple majority has been reached for the yes vote. Uh, thank you very much. I will now hand back to um, Mr. Vale. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're moving to point number eight, which is appointment of auditors. Our recommendation to the Congress is actually that we reappoint uh, Ernst and Young as our auditor for the next two years. And that again, I will hand over the floor back to you, Mr. Adam Vermont, for uh, this item to be voted on. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Vale. We're just preparing um, the votes, which you uh, now have on screen. Um, so again, just to uh, confirm, we still have 126 national associations logged into the Lumi platform who are eligible to vote in this vote. Uh, the question on screen, do you approve the appointment of Ernst & Young for a period of two years? Um, the answers are either yes, no, or abstain. And again, this will be a simple majority vote, and the vote is now open. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everyone. We are uh, going to leave the vote open for another 30 seconds. Thank you. Okay, we are now closing the vote. Thank you. So we have the results now on screen. Um, there were 126 total possible votes, five abstentions, 113 valid votes cast. Of those, 112 voted yes, one voted no. So we have achieved the uh, simple majority for the yes vote in this vote. And I now hand back to Mr. Vale. Thank you very much. Thank you for this point. Now we're moving to point number nine, which is the point number memberships. Uh, as you have seen in the documentation which we have received, uh, we got an application from uh, for membership uh, following a transfer of the membership from Indonesian Hockey Association uh, that was approved uh, by the FIH Executive Board on the 4th of October, and all those uh, informations were noticed to you in the circular, circular to the members. So we will ask you to vote uh, to accept the Indonesian Hockey Federation as a new member of FIH. And therefore, I will pass the floor back to you, Mr. Idemamond. <clears throat> Okay, so we're now um, ready with your permission to um, conduct the, um, the the question on screen. Uh, do you approve the membership of the Indonesian Hockey Federation? Uh, please choose one answer from yes, no, or abstain. 
and the vote is oh yes just to confirm we still have 126 um uh, national associations logged in and el eligible to vote uh, so the vote is now open thank you Thank you, everyone. Um, we will keep the votes open for another 30 seconds. So please do cast your votes. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. The vote is now closed. So we have the results now on the screen. Um, once again, we had 126 possible uh, total possible votes. Five abstentions were received and 115 valid votes cast. Of those, 115 voted yes, zero voted no. So of course the simple majority has uh, been achieved for the yes vote in this vote. Thank you very much. And I hand back now to Mr. Vale. Thank you. Thank you for this. So that means now from now on, uh, in the Indonesia will be uh, qualified to vote. So we can now, uh, please Lumi and uh, Mr. Itamamon, please make sure that we can open the voting system for Indon Indonesia. We are now moving on to point number 10, which turn, point number 10 is approval of subscription system. The subscription system means the annual fee. Um, so annual fee, um, as we always have done, so we recommend we do it exactly the same. So the same subscription fee as you had this year and the years before, which will be collected by the Continental Federation and actually kept by the Continental Federation for development purposes. So again, we recommend uh, to vote for this. And now I pass on the floor again to you, Mr. Hitamamont, for the vote on that. Um, we're just adapting uh, the voting platform here at Lumi to incorporate uh, Indonesia as a as a voting um, uh, delegation. Uh, so please bear with us while we complete that, and we will be with you again shortly. Please, please take your time and make that uh, work. No problem. We have time. We will stay with you. Let us know when you are ready to move forward. Thank you.
Okay, thank you for your patience, everyone. Um, we are now ready for the next uh, vote. Uh, now that Indonesia has been um, elected or joined um, uh, as a visible number. Okay, apologies there. We, I think we had a, a, some technical difficulties. Our feed dropped out, but I believe we are now back. Um, so just to um, reiterate the question on the screen, and again, this is a simple majority vote, uh, now including Indonesia as a, as a voting member. Um, so the question is, do you approve the subscription fee? Uh, the, the answers are yes, no, or abstain. Please choose one. And the vote is now open. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, we will leave the vote open for another 30 seconds. So please do go to the Lumi platform and cast your votes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The uh, vote is now closed. Uh, so the results of that vote are now on the screen. Uh, we had 127 total possible votes, seven abstentions, 115 valid votes were cast. Of those, 107 were yes, eight were no. So clearly the yes votes achieved the simple majority required for this vote. Um, I now hand back to Mr. Vale. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hidamaman. Thank you, Lumi, for this. We are now going to move to point number 11, which are the alterations of statutes. So we have two different items to be voted. Uh, one is and we will vote those in blocks. The first block is actually a proposed uh, alteration of statutes from the executive board, which you all received in your documentation. Uh, but quickly a summary on those two points which are there. The first point is in relation that a president can be uh, elected unopposed if there is only one candidate, and then the same for ordinary members, that uh, ordinary members can be elected unopposed if there are no more candidates than open positions. Uh, that is the first point. And the second point is actually reflecting the case we have currently. If a president dies, resigns, is expelled, or becomes permanently in a, in capacity during the terms of his office, a new president will be elected and this president will then take over the rest of the term. So this is just some clarification, which we felt it is important to put in our statutes so that we have clarification. And that for now, I would like to ask the Congress to vote on that in a block. And I give the floor to Mr. Hidamamant, our independent notary to run that vote. Okay, thank you, Mr. Vale. Um, so we are now uh, ready here to conduct the uh, next vote, which will be, as you mentioned, a special majority vote. Um, that means that um, the amendments must be, uh, must be approved by special majority. 
uh, which means more than three quarters of the uh, national associations that are logged into the Lumi voting platform and uh, who are entitled to vote. So we must achieve three quarters of those um, logged in votes. Um, so we now have the question up on screen. Uh, do you support the amendments to the statutes proposed by the FIH Executive Board? Your possible answers there are yes, no, or abstain. Um, please select one of those. And just to reiterate, we now have uh, 127 eligible national associations uh, who are eligible to vote. Uh, so the vote is now open. Thank you, everyone. We'll uh, keep the votes open for another 30 seconds. So please do cast your votes on the Lumi platform. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. The uh, vote is now closed. OK, so we have the results on screen now. Um, so uh, we had 127 uh, total possible votes, eight abstentions, 119 valid votes casts. Um, the special majority that would be required for this vote to carry is 96 we can see that the yes vote scored 114 and the no vote uh, five. So the uh, special majority for the yes vote has been achieved in this vote. Uh, I now hand back to Mr. Vale. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now we're moving to the second uh, item on uh, the status change, which was a submission from the European Hockey Federation. Uh, you see there are main status amendment and general regulation amendment, but in, in you got all those information sent to you with all the details, but I will try to summarize in really short what those are for. So both items are requesting that a new member should be confirmed after the voting process during a con Congress and that for uh, the newly admitted, ad admitted member can only vote in the Congress, in the next Congress, not at the Congress where he will be elected. Uh, and also any award should be given after uh, the election part of any Congress. So this is a quick summary, but far more details you have received by the documentation which have been sent to you. And therefore, I would like again to have a vote on those alteration of status. And I give the floor again to you, Mr. Hidemamont, to run the vote on that subject. OK, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vale. Um, so like, just to confirm from the outset that we still have 127 uh, national associations logged in and eligible to vote. Uh, the question on screen is do you support the amendments to the statutes and general regulations proposed by the EHF? Uh, the possible answers there are yes, no, or abstain. Uh, please select one of those. The vote is now open.
Okay, thank you everyone. We'll leave the vote open for another 30 seconds. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We are now closing the vote. Okay, so we have the results on the screen. Um, total possible votes, 127. Abstentions were four. Valid votes cast, 123. Given that this is a special uh, majority vote, the, require, the required number of votes for achieve, to achieve a special majority would be 96. Um, of those uh, votes cast, we had uh, yes, 57, no, uh, 66. Um, so we have uh, not achieved the special majority required. Thank you. I hand back to Mr. Vale. Thank you, Luis. Thank you. So we are now moving to the next point, which is point number 12 of the agenda is the election oversight panel uh, presentation. So the report, the report has been sent out to you all. I'm sure you have carefully read the report of the election oversight panel. And I would like to take the opportunity now and here to, to thank uh, the election oversight panel for the massive work they are doing uh, always and the guidance they give us in, in, in relation to election and the monitoring and making sure that everything runs smoothly. So thank you to the election oversight panel for this. And now, without further ado, we're going to point number 13, which is election of the president. Um, so I will hand over the floor to our independent notary, Mr. Luis Hitter Mamont to give us all necessary explanation before we go in into the uh, election process. Floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Um, vale. Um, before we get into the uh, the next uh, vote, I was just going to announce that we have had a further national association uh, join that has voting um, privileges. That is Sierra Leone. Um, so we now have a total of 128 eligible votes uh, on the uh, Lumi voting system, and we are now going to display the the next vote. Um, so here you, if you could please select a maximum of one candidate, uh, or you can choose to abstain. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, yeah. sorry. 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 Sorry, before we go into the vote, it's clear, it's most, most probably a little bit my mistake. But what we will do now is before we go in any voting system, we will give actually the uh, recorded presentation. We will run the recorded presentation in an alphabetical order. The first video will be from uh, Marc Coudron and the second one will be from uh, Tayab Ikram. So please, can we have their uh, video and their presentation? My dear hockey friends, first of all, I want to thank you because you give me the possibility to listen to your needs and to listen to your expectations from the FIH. It was also possible for me to explain what I would like to do for the development of hockey, my intentions and my plan for the future of hockey. As I explained to you, my ideas can, can be summarized in two, uh, two or three points. My first objective is the development. My second objective is the development. And my third objective is also the development. But to achieve that, we need a strong governance. Strong governance means for me much more integrity, a total respect of the gender equality, and much more transparency. You deserve that transparency. And certainly at the level of the finances of the FIH, and also at the level of the FIH Foundation. The situation is not good for the moment, and we have to solve that at a very short term. I explained to you during our different conversations with 
around 100 people in the world, my different plans for the development. We stop with water-based pitches because it's more and more a scandal to use around 15 to 20,000 liters of water for each game in the world. That's not possible anymore and it will be a scandal in the coming years. We have to develop the FIH Academy, which is very good in different languages, not only in English, but much more in Spanish, also in Arabic, in French, maybe in other languages. We have to go to what I call the big hockey family. I explained to you it's very important to share the same values and that's what we need uh, with this, the what we mean with the big hockey families but i miss actually something concrete about that and i explained to you how i want to do it with more clinics with more bringing materials from one country to another with one people from one people to another ones that's for me very very important another point is about the development of hockey uh, with world cups with 24 teams for hockey 5 hockey 11 and hockey indoor for the moment, we are the only sport, collective sport, with so few nations. And it's not possible to go uh, in, the, in this way in the future. We have to expand the number of nations and to give much more possibilities uh, to new nations to enter into the World Cups. It will give much more possibilities for those nations to receive subsidies from the governance and to receive maybe to get some new sponsors also and to help to get more members in the future. So only positive things in the future. Actually, with me as president, I want to work with an EB with lots of confrontations of ideas. I really like to work with people who are not yes men and yes women, but to have confrontations of ID. I don't want confrontations between persons. That's not necessary. That's a loss of energy. But to have confrontations of ID. The only confrontations I like between persons is actually on a hockey field for two teams playing for the victory. With me as president, I will stop also a kind of obstacles we, we see now between continents. There is kind of fragmentations in hockey and that's really not what we need. We need union. We need to be united. We have so many forces together. We need to go that way together for the nice and sane development of hockey. Finally, I will say a few words about uh, a quote of Mohamed Ali. Impossible is temporary. That's really what I think about the hockey. We have a huge potential. At what we think now who could be impossible, I'm sure that in the coming years it will be possible. Impossible is temporary. I, rem uh, I thank you for your attention and I wish you a very, very nice General Assembly. Thank you. Dear friends, dear hockey family, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. I am full of gratitude to be with you today and for the great work you all are doing in your national federations. Let me also thank all of you for the time you spent with me in the last weeks and for your valuable input and your valuable experience. We all felt that we have a lot of challenges and we have commonalities in our great development work and the opportunities we already discussed. I also felt that we have become disconnected and that is something very serious and we need to address it. It is time to look at FIH positively. Unnecessary criticism will not take us anywhere. We have to develop a culture of acceptance. Despite COVID-19 challenges and with no events, we had successful financial impact. And FIH budget for 2022 is already showing a positive result and I am very confident that we can double in 2023 the budget result positively. FIH is already progressing to achieve its sustainability goals. We have made huge progress with our partners to find solutions for waterless and less water pitches. Let us appreciate this. We should take positive steps to improve development at national and regional level. Empowering smaller nations Enhancing accessibility should be our priority.
athletes need to be put at center stage of what FIH does. We need to help athletes with their career, future education, and ensure their mental health and psychological well-being. We need to create better opportunities for second and third year nations and enhance our FIH events to cater the need of second and third year nations. Indoor hockey need a better focus and also we need to prioritize it and we must continue our good work on Hockey 5 which is already taken very positively. Building partnership with values to generate more funds to help the development at all levels. I am in a much better position to move forward our commercial relations. It is very important to activate the FIH Foundation that it can serve its core business of development. We should improve our communication and make it more effective. Our focus stays on youth to take up hockey as their lifelong sport in parallel to making the experience of watching hockey much more attractive for our future generations. We need to ensure to remain in the Olympic Games and improve our Olympic status. As all of you know, I am passionate about development and I am a development ambassador. I have my footprint across five continents where I have delivered development programs and it has been my passion and my priority. I have been part of seven Olympic Games in different roles and different capacities. I am proud to say that I was the founding member of the FIH Education and Coaching Pathway Strategy. I played an important role in developing and framework of the strategic plan for the IOC Sport and Active Society Commission and that provided me a better prospects of global sports understanding. I would like to thank everyone for trusting me and believing in me. And I think that we do not need to demonstrate control. We need to work together. We have to accept each other. We need to showcase solidarity. I promise you I will be a voice of solidarity. And I will always be with you and that's the only way that we can explore full potential of hockey. I will unite FIH. This is a collective job for all of us. My development record is clear. I will always protect the smaller nations. Trust is earned and I will earn yours. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Muito obrigado. Muchas gracias. Sheshe. Thank you to both candidates for their presentation. And now I would like to hand over to you, uh, Mr. Hidemamand, for uh, explanation of the election of the president and then to conduct the elections. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vail. Um, so before we, we proceed to the um, uh, votes, I'm just going to read out for everyone's benefit the um, 7.2c from the statutes, which deals with the uh, the voting process for um, presidency. So further to Article 6.3d2, election to the executive board, whether as president or as an ordinary member, requires an absolute majority to vote in favour of the candidate. If no candidate receives the support of an absolute majority on the first ballot, first a second ballot will be held. If there are more than two candidates for the post, then only the two candidates who came first and second in the first ballot shall be put forward in the second ballot. Point two, if neither candidate is supported by an absolute majority on the second ballot, there shall be a third ballot. Point three, if neither candidate is supported by an absolute majority on the third ballot, the candidate with the largest number of votes shall be declared the winner. Point four, if there is a tied vote on the third ballot, then following the completion of all other elections, the members of the executive board present at the Congress shall select the winner by simple majority. So just to recap, um, delegates will have the option of selecting a maximum of one candidate from the list of two candidates, but may also choose to abstain. 
Um, so we're just going to check the numbers of eligible um, votes, uh, the national associations. Just bear with us one second while we collect that. Okay, so we have an update in the um, the numbers of eligible NAs that who can vote. It is now up to 129 because we have been joined now by Papua New Guinea. So the, the new uh, total number of eligible uh, votes on the Lumi platform is 129. Um, so I think we are getting ready now to display uh, the uh, vote for the election. Uh, so as you can see on screen, once again, please select a maximum of one candidate, uh, or you can also choose to abstain. So the candidates are Kudron Mark and Ikram Tayab. So we now declare the votes open. Okay, the votes are coming in well. Um, we're just going to allow another 30 seconds to make sure everybody has a chance to go and vote on the Lumi voting platform. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. We are now closing the vote. Okay, thank you very much. So we now have the uh, results on the screen there. We had um, 129 possible votes. Of those, 126 were validly cast. Uh, Kudron Mark achieved 47 and Ikram Tayab achieved 79. The um, absolute majority required for this vote was 65. So I can confirm that Ikram Tayab is elected in this vote. Thank you very much. And I now pass back to Mr. Vale. Thank you for this. Congratulations to uh, Mr. Ikram Tayab being elected the president, the new president of FIH. And this will be actually for the rest of the actual term of the presidency, which will be for the next two years, just to clarify this straight away. So now we will move to the point number 14, which is election of ordinary members. So election 14.A is election of female ordinary members at the executive board. We have here, we have two open positions and we have three candidates, which the candidates are Maureen Greg Rousseau, King Elizabeth Safao, and then Rodeval Marion. So those are the three candidates. And again here, we will run the three videos for them to present themselves to the Congress. Please, can you run the video? Greetings to all. I am Maureen Craig Russo from Trinidad and Tobago, and I'm pleased for the opportunity to address you at our 48th Congress. Over the last three years, we have all been through tough times due to the COVID-19 pandemic which has negatively impacted us emotionally and economically. At this time, I extend my condolences to all who have lost loved ones. My motivation to be an executive board member is based on my wish to give back. 
As a volunteer for many years at various levels of the sport, my journey has taken me from a domestic player, national association president, technical official, to an international administrator. I now offer my rounded experience and knowledge of our sport together with my passion, professional background, and management skills. If re-elected, I fully commit to continue to diligently work as an ambassador for hockey. The FIH has officially existed for approximately 98 years and has a lot to be proud of. Our sport is a drug-free Olympic sport, gender balance in the mean, excellent volunteers, exciting events, many fans, and open to progressive change. There is still much to be done, however, to strengthen our developing and emerging national associations. And while we may not yet be financially independent, with strong governance and innovative strategies, as an optimist, I'm confident that we will succeed. My priority and mindset focuses on the continued strategy building and execution of all aspects of the sport, which must be sustainable, consistent, with a global reach. We all have seen proof that sustained exposure of players and officials to competition has been successful in performance levels. This is even more so for emerging and developing countries. We are all aware of the gaps that exist in performance in the field of play, which is directly linked to the lack of financial and infrastructural resources from region to region. In my humble view, FIH strategy building for development must therefore consistently target these challenges. Friends, sport in general has changed and we are now in competition for scarce sponsors and partner resources. We are competed, competing with esports and various genres of traditional sport. There is presently major competition for supporters' attention, and hockey needs to continue to be very innovative to capture and keep the attention of our fans. In 2024, the FIH will celebrate Hello? 100 years as an organized sport. To be stronger together, Hello? we must continue to collaborate and work cohesively. The continued global spread of the sport can only be achieved if diverse voices and opinions are allowed. Competition to score goals should be left on the field of play. The achievement of goals or objectives in the boardroom must be to the interests of all national associations. I enjoy collaborating with diverse teams. I am an independent, critical thinker who is not afraid to challenge norms and bring recommendations to the table. I look forward, if re-elected, to bring my experience and knowledge to hockey, which has given me so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I give my commitment to the task at hand. Sustained development, diversity, inclusiveness, and strong governance. I look forward to your support. Thank you. For over 40 years in hockey as a national player, playing national team management roles, club founder, a tournament director and technical official, African Hockey Federation executive board member, and the International Hockey Federation executive member, who also serve on its international relations committee as a member, and also a member of UCSA, that is Confederation of African Sports Association, my journey through the life of hockey had not been that easy, especially with a continent that has great passion for football to the neglect of other sports, including hockey. Notwithstanding, I'm passionate about hockey and its development holistically, but my emphasis is on women's hockey, especially in my part of the world where I see sports as a strategic opportunity and tool to empower young women to pursue their lifelong dreams and for them to serve as champions 
for the generations that come after them, just as I have been doing in the National Women's Team of Ghana. My strategy continues to be to empower them to realize their inner strength, wisdom, courage, vitality, and being agents of positive change. And I do this both locally and internationally through hockey. When I reflect on the main function of FIH, which is primarily being responsible for the mission and governance of the Federation, making sure that uh, it is run ethically and legally, I see my continued role in its membership as my years of administrative and governance experience as a senior government of Ghana official, that is the director of prisons, my role in organizing and directing, especially in my NA and sports in Ghana, where I have served as the vice president and women's commission chair of the Ghana Olympic Committee, and now the executive director of an eco-friendly hospitality destination in Ghana, uh, which is a first class tourist destination south of the Sa Sahara. Just to mention a few are uh, testament to my leadership qualities. I have an in-depth knowledge of hockey, both locally and internationally. Drawing on my roles as international technical official and leader of the Ghana, Ghanaian team to international tournaments, the most recent being Birmingham 2022. I'm guided in all that I do by the integrity I bring to any endeavor I undertake, my decision-making process, and a strong advocate for fairness, diversity, equity, and inclusion. When it comes to teamwork, team building, and harmonious operations, I have a unique interpersonal, interpersonal skills based on my education experience as an alternative dispute resolution practitioner, which I have put at the disposal of the International Relations Committee on the FIH as a member. I have a good understanding of financial operations of an organization. Having been the deputy financial director while I served in government of Ghana institutions, and also as a treasurer for Ghana Hockey and African Hockey Federation. The development of our sports will remain my top priority. And I do associate myself with the achievements of FIH, as well as any shock comings of FIH for the past four years in its drive to achieve development through diverse ways. Going forward, I will continue to be involved in working partnership and training with hockey developed countries to drive the agenda for our sports. Against this background, I seek your support and voice to continue to serve another term on the FIH board, as four years is not adequate enough to realize one's dreams and to make an appreciable impact, and also continue to pursue my dreams of making a change in the development of hockey locally and internationally. And it's better for working. Please do vote me to make that impact. Thank you. Dear new president, dear hockey family, cher famille de hockey. Do you like playing hockey in a team? Do you like working in a team? Do you like winning with the team? Yes, of course, we all do. Oui, bien sûr, nous voulons tous être part d'une équipe gagnante. In the last few weeks, I talked to many of you personally. I heard a lot about the different needs, views and challenges all around the world. A lot of countries and ad hockey federations had some difficult years because of the pandemic. Now we have to look ahead and get the children back to play. Hockey is an Olympic sport. We need the IOC for solid finances and to stay visible for the younger generation we want to reach. So we have to make sure that hockey has a good image and an evident good governance. The number of hockey players and hockey countries have to increase. Thanks to Hockey 2024 Global Development Strategy, we are already heading in the right, right direction to achieve this goal. We need the variety of high-performance hockey on the one hand, 
Hockey 5 as a great development tool, Indoor Hockey, Hockey ID, Beach Hockey on the other hand. We have to optimize, to promote and to spread them further. Especially smaller countries require multiple and sustainable support to develop hockey. There's a lack of equipment, good coaches, infrastructure, the list is long. Today we have elected a new president. Congratulations, Mr. President. But we reach our goals not only with the new president. This is why we need a strong executive board that works as a well-functioning team. First, the new executive board must act strictly in accordance with the principles of good governance, transparency and integrity. As an established hockey sport, we have to stand in line with these IOC principles if we want to maintain our solid position under the five rings. Only recently, in September, the IOC updated the Olympic Charter. Sports organizations have both the duty and responsibility to ensure that principles of good governance are upheld in their activities. We all want transparency in financial matters, we all want greater participation and we all want clear competences and responsibilities. We all have to be a strong team, a solid, a solid and united sport family, a family with great values. The FIH has their written values, respect, fair play, integrity, community building, inclusion, great values that I want to push forward. Only if we all work together and look in the same direction can we successfully develop hockey all over the world and inspire the younger generation? Let the hockey family grow further. We have such a great variety. We have small countries, we have big countries. Your problems should be our problems. All your problems have to be taken seriously. Let's help each other and learn from each other. And finally, a strong executive board will lead to a strong federation. We are now in the same situation as a coach before a nomination. You have the honor and the responsibility. It's up to you to choose the strongest players, to build the strongest team and to win and to reach our challenging targets. All candidates are good candidates and we need a perfect mix of individuals, characteristics and skills. As a successful coach Phil Jackson says, the strength of the team is each individual member and the strength of each member is the team. Some of you might think, how can this young woman, Marion Rodewald, help us to develop global hockey? As a captain of a gold medal team and three times Olympian, and as an experienced athletes representative, I had to manage different problems, but always looking at the well-being of the athlete and the total team. As a captain, as a mother of three children, as a successful entrepreneur, I have learned to listen carefully, to weigh things up and to act. With me, you will not only get experience and knowledge, you will also get confidence, courage and credibility. Hockey is a great sport. Let's raise it to the next level and bring our beloved sport into a stronger position. Get ready for the future today and make the right and considerate choice. We need a tough team, fresh faces and innovative ideas. This is why I ask you for your vote and thank you for your support. Merci pour votre vote. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Marion, for your presentations. Thank you for your passion for our sport. Now I will hand over to uh, Mr. Hittemont for the election of that section. Thank you very much, Mr. Vale. Um, we are uh, now ready here at uh, Lumi's offices. Um, so just to uh, recap, um, there are two positions to be filled in this election, and there are three candidates. Um, the delegates have the option of selecting a maximum of two candidates, but can also choose to select either one or abstain from voting. Um, so just uh, to confirm, we are still at 129 uh, national associations that are logged on and eligible to vote. So we will now display the vote on screen. So once again, please select a maximum of two candidates, or you can choose to select one, or you may abstain from voting. The uh, options are Craig Rousseau Maureen, King Elizabeth Safoa, 
uh, Rodewald Marion. Uh, the vote is now open. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone for your votes, which are coming in uh, nicely. Um, just a reminder to please, once you've made your selection in the Lumi platform, to click the send button so that your votes will be counted. We will leave this open uh, for another 30 seconds. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you everyone. We are now closing the vote. Okay, so the results on the screen, uh, we had 129 possible votes. Uh, of those, 124 were validly cast. Uh, according to the absolute majority requirement, the absolute, sorry, the majority required is 65. Uh, the results here on screen, Craig Rousseau, Maureen, 88. King Elizabeth Safoa 68 and Rodewald Marion 64. So given that 65 is the required amount for an absolute majority, I confirm that uh, Craig Rousseau Maureen and King Elizabeth Safoa are both elected and the two positions are now filled. I now hand back to Mr. Vale. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. Thank you for this. Congratulations. To Maureen and Elizabeth to be re-elected as a member of the executive board for the next four years. Now we're moving to our next item, which is election of male ordinary members of the executive board. And here, as you have seen, which we have communicated to you, given the part that uh, Mr. Ikram Tayab has been elected as president, we now have three open positions uh, for the ordinary members. The two first elected will have a term of four years and the third one elected uh, will then have the fulfillment of the term, which will be a two year term. So the two first elected will be member for four years and the third elected will then fulfill the term of Mr. Ikram Tayab currently, which is a two year term, just to be specifically clear on that. Those are the six candidates we have. Uh, Hiroya Ansai, Walter Kramer, Simon Mason, Dion Morgan, Piotr Wil Wilkonski, John Williamson. And here as well, we will now run the videos for them to present them to you. Please run the videos. My name is Hiroya Ansai, and I'd like to thank for the opportunity to present my candidacy as an executive board member. I'm excited to share my over 15 years of hockey experience, as well as my recent experience at Tokyo 2020 Organizing Committee and NAOC, in addition to my professional working experience. Skills I gained through these experiences, such as strategic mindset, leadership skills, communication skills, and financial skills, will no doubt be an asset I bring to the position, but I will iterate my experience in the next few slides. In my 50 years of hockey experience, I have experienced wide range of roles from player to general manager to high performance director for Team Japan, allowing me to gain an aerial perspective of hockey. I have received many titles as noted here with 
2018 Asian Games champions for both male and female teams, being one of the highlights of my hockey career. My work as the HPD contributed to this historical moment for Team Japan, as it was a reflection of the legalist and strategic measures. I look to reinvent the high performance in Japan, including appointed non-Japanese head coaches to both teams to bring a world-class training and mindset, which Japan lacked at the time. Professionally, I have worked for the largest structure company in Japan for almost 35 years, but for four years, I was seconded to Tokyo Olympic Organizing Committee, where I led the entire multicultural venue management team, including price negotiations and rigorous renegotiations of the venue usage upon the postponement of Tokyo 2020. This required a highly strategic approach, both operationally and financially, not to mention being under major stress when the details of the entire postponement was under a microscope from the entire world. So it is not an exaggeration when I say that we were very proud to successfully deliver one of the toughest games in history of Olympics. My main involvement with this international sport is through my role as the director of International Affairs Division at JHA. Additionally, at TOGOK, my key task at TOGOK was to lead with IOC, various IFs, CFs, and NOCs, thus gaining a lot of international sport exposure. I have long been involved in activities at the national level at JHA and the Japanese Olympic Committee. I have served in various roles at JHA in the last 10 years, including senior executive board member, where I rigorously implemented the Code of Governance, which is now regarded as one of the most successful amongst the sport organization in Japan. And as chairman of Tokyo 2020 Olympic Committee of the Japan Hockey Association, I worked with FIH, Tokyo Metropolitan Government, and other related organizations to not only safely construct the only international level hockey stadium in Tokyo, but also to develop and implement a plan for its use after the game as a legacy of Japan Hockey Community. So through my experiences, I just noted one of the greatest thing I have witnessed is the impact and legacy hockey can have in the host communities through the Olympics, including usage hockey as a vehicle to bring the community together. Therefore, I am especially keen on further development hockey around the world by leveraging large events, including Olympics to create a legacy of building a new bigger hockey community. Thank you for your consideration for my candidacy for the FIH Executive Board member and I look forward to sharing my knowledge and passion for hockey to serve the hockey community around the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the global hockey community. I've had several roles in hockey, having played it for 42 out of my 49 years. I was a national team player for Chile for 12 years. I was a coach for little boys and girls and also coached my club team to become national champions in 2012. I've been a board member with the Pan American Federation for the last nine years, which has connected me to the needs of some of the smaller nations. And I'm particularly proud that we are able to support and fund the organization of an annual Central American Development Tournament. Between 2017 and 2019, I served as the Pan Am Rep on FIH Competitions Committee. At the NA level, I had the privilege to lead the Chilean Hockey Federation for the last nine years, in which Chile reached heights that we could only dream about a decade ago. I remember sitting in the stands for the Utrecht 98 World Cup, watching players like De Neuer, Escarré, Shabas, among other legends of our sport, and I remember thinking, boy, are we far away from all of this. My second time at a World Cup was four months ago, 
when our Chilean ladies went to Amstelveen and Terrassa for their first World Cup. So basically, it took us a few decades to eventually going from the start of a dream to being inside the World Cup. You could say, in all fairness, by the time Chile actually made it, it was already a second or third tier nation. Well, this is true. The takeaway for me here is not where we find ourselves when we actually reach the target, but rather where we find ourselves when we start the journey and what kind of dreams are we able to set for ourselves and for our teams. This is a conversation we usually have with some of my fellow NA presidents in Central America, because we all need to have little mountains to climb. Start small, and once we get to that first top, a new mountain will emerge, and then it becomes a journey. It won't happen overnight, but once we are able to set and communicate a dream, this will help us get going. Now a few words on events. The big motivation for athletes. The World League was an exciting format, which enabled to play not only internationally, but also intercontinentally, and on the official qualification route to World Cup or Olympic Games. Despite some challenges on the funding of some of the teams, if we look at the statistics over the three cycles of the competition between 2012 and 2017, a combined 80 plus countries participated in total with increasing number of teams every cycle as we hit 65 teams on the men and 53 teams on the women on the last edition. Pro League and Nations Cup cover only 17 teams in the world. So I think we really need to find additional and creative ways for more teams to be able to compete internationally. We would all probably agree on the main priorities for global hockey. The question is what qualities and leadership do we need to be most effective? I think we need to have leaders, obviously with the appropriate experience, but also capable of connecting and inspiring our other leaders spread out globally. Our leadership needs to be based on empathy since younger generations are already challenging Plus, we need to hear the small nation's voices too, which have great ideas to share and explore. This I've realized clearly in many of the calls I've had coming to this election. I've worked for 20 plus years at some of the biggest multinational companies and always had international assignments. I'm fluent in four languages and I'm working on French as my fifth language. I believe my hockey and professional experiences have prepared me to take it to the next level, contributing at the FIH. My main motivation is to work with all the smaller nations in the world to hear them and help them set and reach their dreams, while also looking into our event portfolio and the possibility of signing up additional global sponsors in order to be able to fund new development activities. I bring integrity, independence, passion and fresh air to our global team. So I really hope you can support me. Thank you very much. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for giving me a few moments of your time. My name is Simon Mason and I stand, albeit digitally, before you as one of the male candidates for the two positions on the FH Executive Board. I appreciate that this is a day full of speeches and you'll be sitting there very patiently waiting for my philosophy on hockey moving forwards. But the first thing that is so important is that our leadership should engage the passion and the energy and the love that we have in our global hockey community to create a united hockey world, a world where we work together. We remove the barriers and the distances between the nations to create a truly united hockey community so all of our energies can be used to the best of our abilities. Over the last three months, I've spoken to over a hundred people around the world about their hockey needs. And the primary concern from everybody is development. It's a complex word because development is so different for so many people. Is it the partnerships required by Haiti, the equipment needs of Sierra Leone, the transportation problems of Uzbekistan? All of those things add into one simple problem. How is it done? And the answer, unfortunately, is a cold one and that is finance. And I believe that the FIH should have a very simple ring-fenced budget that they can allocate for development around the world, enabling us, the governing body, to cut through administration, to accelerate government programs and to encourage partnerships, 
to ensure that we can get a global development program with the greatest return on investment over the months and years to come. Choosing and championing specific projects with fairness and equity around the world. I understand the trickle down of the Continental Federation programs, but this is ring fenced, targeted development programs from the world's governing body. That in itself will be an activity and leads to the second part of my program, which is transparency. Every aspect of the FAH's actions and activities should be transparent. We should understand what is going on. We should be able to engage with the programmes and the projects and bring together all of our elements and expertise because we understand it and it's communicated transparently to the world. If that happens, then we can believe in the leadership from the president, the CEO and the board and engage with that because successful teams have leaders who inspire and we as the board should be the ambassadors that draws in the expertise of the world. However, that still needs to be based around governance and financial rigor. And the board members should have the competence to challenge the financial integrity of the organization and ensure that every single dollar, euro, pound, Swiss franc, cent is well spent, is documented and has the greatest value return for the whole hockey community of the world. In order to do that, your board members need to have competence. They need to be experts in their own field. They need to understand their national associations, their continental federations. They need a depth of experience that means that the global hockey picture is familiar. They can relate to the nations themselves, the people in this room, your problems, we should understand and I believe I can do that. That competence itself leads me to why you would vote for me. The FIH had 11 categories put forward by their elections oversight committee and I was proved competent in all 11. That is a document that you've had, only three male candidates were. I believe that, coupled with three Olympic games of athletic participation, give me an understanding of performance. But more than that, hockey has been everything in my life for the last 35 years since I started playing. I believe I can bring a passion and an energy and a love of the game alongside that competence to be a valuable board member, to represent your needs and interests, to ensure that we can move the sport forwards together. Thank you for your time. Hello hockey leaders, my name is Dion Morgan and I am the president of South African Hockey Association. I am a strong leader and team player and I know when to wear which hat. I never lose focus on the vision, but believe in changing the how to as required. I bring integrity, passion for winning, a wealth of experience, ethical leadership, and good governance. I have led and been part of various organizations and structures, both professionally and in sports, and I believe in creating an environment of trust and collaboration. I thrive in diverse teams where we bring different lenses to the table to ensure that we are making informed decisions. I believe that for the continuous growth of the game, we need to ensure that the athlete is at the heart of everything we do. As athletes needs change, we need to be able to evolve accordingly and be able to engage with various stakeholders to ensure that hockey continues to be played from cradle to grave. During this journey, lifelong relationships are formed. As I mentioned, I'm, I'm president of South African Hockey Association. I served on the South African Hockey Association Executive Board as the head of the events portfolio for seven years. I was president of Eastern Province Hockey Federation for two terms. And Eastern Province Hockey is an affiliate member to South African Hockey. And I was also chairman and founding member of the Galvan Hockey Club, who's an affiliate member to the Eastern Province Hockey Federation. 
From a professional perspective, I work for Diplomat Distributors, which is a sales and distribution company. I serve on the Diplomat South Africa Executive Board for the last, well, since 2014. I'm currently the Vice President of Business Development. And in my first year in this role, I've secured Kraft Heinz to come back into South Africa, Muti, as well as Lotus Biscoff to change from their previous distribution company and join our organization. I've headed up various sales organizations and in all of those built various route to market solutions, developed new channels and exceeded targets annually. I headed up trade category and activations. And in this role, I've developed and executed brand strategies for many a company. And to mention a few, um, Mondelez International, Jacobs Dow Egbert, as well as Red Bull. I was business unit manager for the small and beverage company. Um, and in that role, we did a route to market solution for Coca-Cola South Africa. I can build relationships and communicate effectively at all levels across all walks of life. Effective teaching happens only when trust is gained. I've mentioned the various roles. The only thing I would like to add is that I was also the manager of the South African men's hockey team for a five year period. Um, and something to add from a present activities, I still serve on the board of trustees for Aslan Hope in Sport for the last eight years. It's a non-profit organization that uses sport as a vehicle to reach and upskill um, underprivileged communities with a specific focus on the youth as well as children. Um, the other roles I've mentioned, um, to add to it, I've also coached hockey at various uh, levels, um, as well as baseball in other and other sporting codes. I think in all my professional as well as sporting career, I was always focused on the growth and development of the organization. Um, looking at the financial aspects of the organization, which I think is very important, and that is by looking at additional revenue streams as well as um, sponsors, um, and then obviously governance. All these things only happen when there's good governance um, taking place. I want to once again thank you for affording me the opportunity to present myself, and I want to wish you well as you cast your votes. Thank you. Hello. My name is Piotr Wilkoński and I am asking for your vote. I am from Poland and here is my hockey home, my club. I am applying for the election to the executive board of the International Hockey Federation. But more important is that I am here because I would like to talk about the field hockey. I believe in solidarity of nation and uh, supports the developing world can provide to our sport. Field hockey has a lot of popularity and a large number of playing people, but is still not recognizable in the mainstream. They are offered for the young people who spend several minutes every day to watching whole sport, but not to hockey. I am the General Secretary of Polish Hockey Association and a board member of the Polish Association. And I am also, and maybe the first, the passionate of field hockey. I played my first game in 1976 and from that moment the hockey became a major part of my life. What is important to me and what is my goal? I hope you agree that time has come to make the field hockey a prominent sport in the mainstream media. So I'm inviting you to join me. I believe that the following elements are essential of our future. Promote field hockey in the countries where it is not currently popular by creating the partnerships between clubs and federations at the all level. Reach the people who didn't know about our sport yet. Create one main international calendar of tournaments for clubs as well as national teams so that people across the globe can follow their favorite teams or players and get excited about watching them play without having to jump from website to website. Let's use artificial intelligence machine learning and other technologies 
to bridge the gap between field hockey and other sports and streaming social platforms metaverse, be a pioneer in the changing market. Support the countries that we are forgetting, where there is not competition, where there is not fund to participate in competition. For that, you need the candidates that understand those countries. Last two years of my work for the Polish Hockey Association have provided that you can develop hockey and have new fans. I know how to do. In 2017, our media was visited by several hundred people per year. Today, it is over 2 million a year. If you are looking for candidates who will represent the countries outside of the hockey top, but also listen to the best one and introduce provide solution, you should vote for me. I am not afraid to talk and fight for the development of hockey. If you support me today, you can be sure that I will support you tomorrow. I'm John Williamson, and I'm seeking your vote for the FIH board. I'm a New Zealander, also with Irish citizenship, and I'm currently living and working between New Zealand and Europe. I have spent my entire career working across international environments. I've been deeply connected to hockey throughout my life as a player, a hockey parent, as a goalkeeper coach, and as a national administrator. I love this sport. I was a board member and chair of Hockey New Zealand for seven years. During this time, we transformed our national sporting organisation into a more professionally run entity. We significantly increased our commercial funding and our player numbers. We also developed an effective high performance programme, which delivered New Zealand's best ever world rankings. The key quality I'd bring to the FIH board is very strong commercial, organisational and governance expertise, having led many organisations in chief executive and governance roles. Given the challenges our sport is facing and the pace of change, I believe it is essential for at least some FIH board members to have deep governance expertise. I also believe this should include meaningful governance experience outside of hockey and ideally in dynamic commercial entities. I have been a past or present board member of more than 30 organisations, including publicly listed and private companies, a global investment fund, and a national sporting organisation being Hockey New Zealand. In 25 years of leading companies, I've achieved a track record of driving organisational change, financial turnarounds, and strategic growth. I have significant experience in developing international partnerships and engaging with commercial and government stakeholders. I'm a strong advocate for organisational transparency and accountability. In my opinion, the FIH needs to be more transparent with its members about its financial performance and the commercial challenges it may be facing. FIH members and other key stakeholders should expect a much greater level of financial disclosure. I believe hockey is at a critical point where we need to transform our sport to grow. In developing hockey nations, we need to establish and grow a strong base and attract the right supporting partners. At an elite level, we need to balance the demands of player professionalism with the commercial realities of delivering events and showcasing our sport. And all hockey nations whether large or small, need to build or retain our influence and relevance in the wider sporting arena. New Zealand is a small hockey country that consistently punches above its weight, despite the challenges and costs of being a minor sport in a faraway place. We can identify with the significant challenges most national associations are facing and the everyday struggle to make the best use of your very limited finances. This is why, in my view, every FIH dollar must be put to the best possible use for our sport. I therefore think that the comparative skill set of each board candidate should
should be a far more relevant criteria for you in voting and the continent candidates come from. And yet so much of the voting appears to be along continental lines. Try being an independent board candidate from Oceania, a continent with just eight votes. Governance expertise should be the key criteria. I love the sport and I really want to see it succeed. I'm a candidate who gets things done and I'm not afraid to push for change. I'd bring a track record of integrity, accountability and commercial and strategic expertise to this board, combined with my lifetime experience in hockey. If you are seeking to achieve genuine positive change, please give me your first or second vote today. Thank you. Thank you, Iroya. Thank you, Walter. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Ian, Ian, James. Thank you, Piotr. Thank you, John. Again, here, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your passion. And thank you for your dedication to hockey. Now I will hand over to uh, Mr. Hedevaman for running the election for male candidates in the executive board. Floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Vale. Um, we are ready now here to go through um, the next uh, vote for the election of the male ordinary members. Uh, just to recap, um, there are three vacant positions to be filled and six candidates. So when the um, when we come to opening the vote, um, the delegates will have the option of selecting a maximum of three candidates, um, but they can also choose to select either one or two or refrain from voting uh, and abstaining entirely. Um, but again, please do, um, after you've made your selection, uh, click the send button in the Lumi platform so that your uh, vote will be counted. Um, before we display the, um, the vote, uh, just to confirm that we still have 129 national associations logged into the Lumi platform and eligible to vote. And this will be an absolute majority uh, vote process. So the absolute majority will be once again calculated on that 129 uh, figure. Um, so perhaps if we now display the vote on screen, uh, we have it here. So please select uh, three maximum candidates, or you may also choose to only select one or two or none at all. Um, the options here are Anzai Hiroya, Kramer Walter, Mason Simon, Morgan Dion James, Wilkonski Peter, Williamson John. Uh, we now declare the vote open. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone for your votes. They're coming in nicely. We're going to leave the votes open um, a, a good amount of time just to make sure that everybody is able to make their selection. So again, you can choose up to three candidates or one candidate or two candidates or no candidates and abstain. And then please do click uh, press the send button uh, to make sure that your vote is cast. So we'll keep the vote open um, for at least another minute. Thank you. Okay, so just another 30 seconds now uh, for your votes. Please do vote on the Lumi platform. Thank you.
Okay, thank you everyone. We are now uh, closing the vote. Thank you. We will need a few moments just to compile um, the results and to uh, to confirm with the scrutineers, and then we'll we will be back with the results um, in due course. Thank you. Okay, so we now have the dis, uh, the results on the screen. Um, we again we had 129 possible votes. Of those, 125 were validly cast. Um, the um, the majority, uh, the absolute majority required for this vote, was 65 votes. Um, so if I go through the uh, results here, we have uh, Anzai Hiroya 72. We have Kramer Walter 48. We have Mason Simon, 52. We have Morgan Dion James, 66. We have uh, Wilkonski Peter, 70. And we have Williamson John. So of those six candidates, there were three candidates who achieved the absolute majority requirement. Uh, they were Anzai Hiroya, uh, Wilkins, uh, Wilkin, Wilkonski Peter, sorry, and uh, Morgan Dion James. So those three candidates have been elected and all three positions have been filled. So we do not need to proceed to any further votes for this item on the agenda. Um, I now hand back to Mr. Vale. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Lumi. Thank you to you, Mr. Ida Mont, for assisting us today in those uh, votings. Uh, just to recap and congratulation to the three members which have been elected now as a member of the executive board, Ansai, Mr. Ansai, Mr. Morgan, and Mr. Wilkinson. Just for sake of clarity, uh, Mr. Morgan Dion, he was the third with the numbers, uh, sir, based on the number of votes, he will be elected for two years. The two other candidates are elected for the four years. So just to notify this, uh, as mentioned by myself before, because the third position is actually taking over the mandate or the period from Tayak Ibkram, which has just been elected president of FIH. So thank you for me. For, for, thank you again, Lumi. Thank you, Mr. Hidemamont. And that concludes our point number 14 and concludes all our voting points. And now without further ado, I do hand over to our acting president, please. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Now we'll come for our award and we'll start with the president award. The first one, goes to Jill Jiming. Jill Jiming is Oceania Hockey Federation's Continental Development Officer. From establishing a life-changing all abilities program locally in New Zealand to removing barriers to participation for women and girls, as well as men and boy in the Pacific Islands, Jill has dedicated her life to providing people with opportunity through hockey. In Jill's words, when people ask what I do, I say it's about hockey, but it's actually more about providing opportunities for individuals to grow and develop on top of the benefits of being physically active. 
Did its commitment over many years to Oceania Hockey and FIH as chair and a member of both the Oceania Hockey Federation and the FIH Education and Development <laughs> Committee has been outstanding. Jill is an educator, coach, administrator, official, and role model for all of us who has committed her life to the growth and development of the sport of hockey and its people. Our next award goes to Dato Sri Shapayak Siriwat. He was recently appointed as the Chief Executive Officer of the Southeast Asian Games Federation Office. Shapayak Siriwat has had an illustrious career in sports management and the government of Thailand. He served as the Minister to Prime Minister's Office, the Deputy Minister of Transport and Communication, and the Deputy Minister of Interior. In the sports world, he has held many important positions over his career in tennis, football, and hockey sports bodies. Batoski is a visionary leader whose grip has been tested time and again. Batoski has exceptionally valuable insights when it comes to event management, and his ideas are an asset for whichever team he works with. His colleague, described Datoski as having unwavering values which have helped him reach the pinnacle of his career. Third President Award go to Marisa Langini. Marisa served the South Ho Africa Hockey Association for more than 15 years. She proved to be an excellent CEO during her term focusing on a number of key areas, including increasing revenue through existing partnerships and stabilizing South Africa hockey's financial position, introducing and collaborating with hockey volunteer subcommittees, ensuring funding for national teams and high-performing camps, and the successful completion of three Premier Hockey League seasons. Highlights include South Africa's qualification and participation in the GOAT Coast Commonwealth Games, the Buenos Aires Youth Olympic Games, and the Tokyo Olympic Games. Mar Marisa worked closely with the African Hockey Federation, supporting the Continental Federation and FIH to enable South Africa to host many tournaments in very critical times, including the FIH Pro League and FIH Junior Hockey World Cup. We take this opportunity to wish Marissa all the best in her new role as CEO of University Sports South Africa and thank Marissa for her commitment to a sport over the years. Fourth goes to Margaret Hannibal. Margaret's hockey career began as goalkeeper for Winchester Hockey Club in England. She took up umpiring in Hampshire County before going on to officiate at national and international level. She is one of the top umpire managers in the world. Margaret's background is academic. She sits on educational boards and trustee, has recently completed a PhD and works in the field of dual partnership education. This brings a strong focus on correct process and protocol, ensuring a strong base for the projects and initiatives she has led. Strongly interested in the development of umpiring as well as safeguarding, she has led or implemented several significant initiatives. 2008 saw the first intake of umpires for European Hockey Federation's prestigious umpire development program for whom Margaret was one of the mentors. The strong attention to fairness and correct procedure has led Margaret to important roles on both the EHF Officials Committee since 2012 and the FIH Rules Committee. It is difficult to quantify what Margaret has given to the sport, not just as an umpire and an umpire manager, but also in terms of administration, forward planning and mentorship of young officials. The landscape for umpiring has developed much in recent years 
overseen by volunteers like Margaret, who work with integrity to ensure the correct atmosphere and conditions for the growth and development of our officials. Six, Shiraz Yakub. Oh, sorry, uh, Willard Harris. Sorry, Willard. Willard has been part of the hockey family for 50 years. He joined Trinidad and Tobago Hockey, played for the national team, became a member of the Trinidad and Tobago Board and National Association. His many roles have included judge, technical delegates for PATH and FIH, chair of the competition committee of PATH and FIH, advisor to many committees within PATH for the, the past 30 years. Willard has contributed to Pan Am Cups, Pan American Games, World Cup, Olympic Games, Commonwealth Games, and many other important FIH hockey events. Willard conducts many seminars, sharing his experience with numerous officials who are now officiating all over the world. He's a great person, excellent father, and a true friend to his friends. Number six is Shiraz Yakub. Shiraz Ali Yakub, former player of the national team of Kenya, has been known for many years as a national and international umpire. Shiraz reached grade one as a FIH umpire. He umpired many tournaments at all levels. When he retired from his career, he became an umpire manager and served FIH and the Africa Hockey Federation. He also was a member of the former FIH Umpires Committee and has been a member of the Africa Hockey Federation Executive Board for more than 10 years till date. Last not least is to Elena Norman. Elena Norman from Australia worked in the Indian sports industry for more than a decade and prior to joining Hockey India, she served as the COO with the sports marketing agency New Delhi. She became the CEO of Hockey India in 2011, assuming the responsibility for overall operation, management and development of the strategic plan amongst many other responsibilities. Elena was responsible to oversee the world-class delivery of international events in India, amongst them, five editions of the Hockey India League, multiple FIH World Cup and FIH 2018 Congress, as well as the FIH Pro League. In 2019, Elena was awarded with the Business Woman of the Year Award at the India Australia Business and Community. Elena holds an extensive number of committee roles within Hockey India, has served on FIH Women in Sport and Competition Committee, and is a current member of FIH Rules Committee. Congratulations to all our awardees and thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Danny, for your assistance. Now, uh, Terry, floor is yours. Thank you, Safe. Now we will, I mean, I hand over here and I introduce to you, there no need to introduction for Hessel, our EB member, the chair of the award panel, who will present to you the FIH awards. So Hessel, the floor is yours. Distinguished members, dear friends, it is my pleasure to lead you through the 2022 FIH awards on the occasion of our 48th Congress. The first award to be presented is the Pablo Negro Trophy. This trophy is presented to a national association that has made a significant mark, either through innovative programs and initiatives, or by embracing the true spirit of hockey through exceptional sportsmanship over the past two years. The trophy is dedicated to the memory of Pablo Negro from Spain, an outstanding leader who dedicated a great deal of his time to the sport of hockey and the FIH. The Pablo Negro trophy goes to 
the French Hockey Federation. The French Hockey Federation, through the election in 2020 of their new president, Isabella Join, and her team has increased the emphasis in their governance in making hockey more inclusive, more sustainable, and more accessible. These themes have been carried passionately by her and her team over the past two years, in spite of a complex financial and social COVID context. The French Hockey Federation works with different organizations with a common denominator to increase social insertion through hockey, whether that is via youth in deprived areas, increase female participation in our sport or education. Through the development of different forms of hockey practice, the French Hockey Federation strive to make hockey more accessible and more dem and democrat and democratize um, our sport in France. The development project is amongst others focused on making hockey more accessible and visible. The creation of satellite clouds is one example. The French Hockey Federation has put in place various training courses in order to have sufficient educators to animate the small hockey pitches and new clubs, but also leadership courses. The Paris Olympics, of course, provides a fantastic opportunity for our sport to take the spotlight, but the ambition is focused on the legacy of the games and the president has done extremely well here. Our second award, is the Tio Yekema Award. Tio Yekema Award is presented to a national association which has inspired, developed and enriched hockey in its homeland through various projects and initiatives. Tio Yekema was a member of the executive board of the FIH and was instrumental in promoting both coaching and development. Sadly, it must be mentioned here that Tia Yokema recently passed away. Please join me, colleagues, with our special thoughts as we remember Tia today. The Tia Yokema Award goes to Uganda Hockey Association, together with a check of 1,000 euros. Through support of the Uganda Olympic Committee, Uganda benefited from Olympic solidarity funding for a development of National Sports Structure Program, DNSS. Through this program, over 350 different personnel received training and certification in areas of umpiring, coaching, general administration, and approach to management of national teams. The course was facilitated by qualified officials and educators from Asia Hockey. All participants attained Asia Hockey Federation Level 1 certification. In partnership with Special Olympics Uganda, the association is in the process of development of Hockey ID, the first step of its kind, the first of its kind in the region. They believe through such initiatives, they shall further support the growth and development of hockey in the country. In 2022, Uganda Hockey signed a landmark broadcast contract with Next Media Services, a local television company broadcasting on traditional television media and accessible over its mobile application, AfroMobile. This coverage spans over all association's activities, arguably making it the only live coverage for local hockey competition across the continent. This has in turn increased exposure of the athletes, rising from one to seven active athletes on pro and semi-pro stints in Europe. 
Despite the prevalence of the COVID-19 pandemic and the associated in interruptions to sport, Uganda hockey was able to hold a successful and fully engaging national league while introducing new products such as the Uganda Cup, a knockout competition that runs alongside the national league throughout the year. In 2022, a new competition, the Memorial Shield was introduced in honor of fallen heroes of the sport. This is also alongside the Masters Hockey Program to be held in late September, 2022. It was held in late September, 2022. Uganda Hockey has also aggressively improved management and administration of organizations involved in grassroots hockey uh, development activities, registering and partnering with over five different hockey development academies, a growth from one officially recognized one. Having last featured on the international scene in 2000, in 2021, the Uganda national team returned competing in a two nation FIH series in March. As a result, the men's team regained international ranking at 91, while the women received their first ever global ranking at 76. The men emerged champions of the series. This was followed up with participation at the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations for both men and women held in January 2022 in the Ghanaian capital of Accra. This was the first time in Uganda that a single sport contingent of such magnitude was representing the country, resulting in its elevation within the government ranking of sports in the country and places the sport as at a favorable footing for government support of its hockey activities. Through the support of the Africa Hockey Federation, numerous individuals were nominated and admitted to the FIH Academy courses. Uganda has registered a surge in the number of active members, cutting across all ages and categories. There has been a growth in the number of clubs and teams participating in the National League and other competitions number of hockey play, playing schools and the recent establishment of a master's program. Let's remember that Mr. Tio Yekema played a key role in Uganda's receipt, receipt and installation of its only AstroTurf, a surface on which tremendous progress has made over the last 14 years, has been made over the last 14 years. Our next award is the H, His Royal Highness, Sultan Aslan Shah Award. The HRH Sultan Aslan Shah Award is designed to acknowledge an individual who has not only made outstanding contributions to hockey, but who also serves as an inspiration role model. This award is dedicated to the memory and spirit of the late Royal Highness Sultan Azla Shah, former King of Malaysia, whose commitment and passion for hockey led to its growth and development during the decades of his presidency of Malaysian and Asian hockey. The HRH Sultan Aslan Shah Award goes to Tunik Tevdorades. Tunique is involved in Georgian hockey for a long time. And together with the president of Georgian Hockey Federation, coaches and volunteers trying to introduce hockey around Georgia. At the moment, Tunique working on a new project called Discover Hockey in Georgia. That includes working with public schools to get more young athletes going. Soon, the Georgian Hockey Federation, under the guidance of Tonik, will develop several new projects for the Georgian Hockey Federation. For example, one is a Hockey PR in Georgia, which includes creating a site and providing information about our sport to young people 
through various online platforms. Tonique attended several European Hockey Federation courses for umpires and coaches and several courses about sports development, which were organized by the Sport for Life organization in the United States of America. We come to our next award, the Etienne Glitchich Award. This award is in recognition of an individual continental federation or national association having developed hockey through innovative ideas and or the professional the professionalization of the organization. Etienne Glitchich was the honorary secretary and subsequent president of the International Hockey Federation. His dynamic approach and dedicated commitment to the sport laid much of the groundwork for the FIH as it is known today. The Etienne Glitchich Award goes to Gino Shilders in recognition for his contribution to the growth and development of hockey. Gino is originally from Netherlands, where he played hockey for clubs like Den Bosch and Orange Zwart. For nearly 25 years, he has been part of the Czech Hockey Federation, starting as a coach of the national teams and later becoming a president of the Czech Hockey Federation. During his years, he has worked hard to develop and establish hockey in many areas. Gino is always active and enthusiastic, and through Erasmus programs, he has helped not only locally, but also to include other countries. It includes youth leadership, coaching programs, ID hockey, LGBT hockey, ETC. Check. Hockey Federation, under the guidance of Gino, was encouraged by Czech National Sports Agency and Czech's women national team will get funding for their road to Olympic Games in Los Angeles in 2028. This is the first time in, in the history of Czechoslovakia that the Czech National Sports Agency supporting hockey in the Czech Republic. Visionary manager, leader, the European Hockey Federation Diploma of Merit. Tio Yekoma Award with Czech Hockey Federation. He did a great deal of work as can be noted from his resume. Our next award is the Gust Lutherwurst Memorial Trophy. This trophy is awarded to an individual who has made a significant mark on the development of umpiring. This award was created to celebrate the life of Gust Lutherwes and the recognition and to recognize his immense contribution to the FIH and world hockey in the area of umpiring. The Gust Lutherways Memorial Trophy goes to Miao Lin, Miss Miao Lin. Miss Miao Lin started her international umpiring career in 2005 and is one of Asia's most accomplished international umpires having umpired at three Olympic Games, three World Cups, and dozens of other top-level events, leading by example. Her accomplishment and commitments have inspired many Asian umpires, and she will continue to influence and reinforce her impact as an international umpires manager once hockey returns after the pandemic. At the national level, Mia Lin has been influenced has been an influ has been influential, sorry, in umpiring and development for many years as well, coaching and mentoring, supporting and guiding the next generation of Chinese umpires. 
Mia Lin especially enjoys sharing from her vast experience with young umpires, so they may benefit from her insight and experience. She received the Golden Whistle Award for 100 international matches in 2014 as the first Chinese umpire, male or female. Our next trophy is a Super Fair Play Rene G. Frank Trophy. The Super Fair Play Trophy recognizes a team of individual or individual having upheld the spirit of hockey and conveyed the utmost respect for opponents through exemplary sportsmanship on or off the field. This trophy was created to celebrate the life of Rene G. Frank, a former Secretary General and subsequent President of the FIH and his invaluable contribution to the FIH and world hockey. The Super Fair Play Trophy, Rene G. Frank goes to Kazakhstan National Team. The Kazakhstan Hockey Federation hosted the first ever AHF Central Asia Cup under the leadership of the Asia Hockey Federation. The tournament was hosted from 2nd to 8th September 2019 in Talji Korjan, Kazakhstan. The government of Tajikistan, due to the lack of availability of funds, had asked Tajikistan not to travel for this tournament since the government at that time was not able to support their team. Tajikistan was on the verge of dropping out of the tournament due to this problem and their financial position. When KHF learned about this, they made special arrangements with Tajikistan and KHF made travel arrangements free of cost for the Tajikistan team and offered them free food and accommodation and transport for the entirety of their stay for the whole squad. Kazakhstan Hockey Federation had always seen the development and promotion of hockey and athletes as their priority. This instance in 2019 was not the first and we are sure it will not be the last. Kazakhstan Hockey Federation has always worked as an organization that sees equal opportunity for all while also offering great sportsmanship in their approach. The Kazakhstan Hockey Federation helped Tajikistan during the Indoor Asia Cup in 2014, which was held in Taltkorjian, Kazakhstan. They also assisted at this time with travel, accommodation and food and they supported the Tajikistan team with equipment. They continued to support the Tajikistan team um, and ensured that they shared together several joint ventures um, to enable the Tajikistan team train and play with the Kazakh team to help them gain knowledge and experience. They played several test series together, and this really made a great contribution to assist the Tajikistan players gain experience and massive exposure during, uh, during their playing time. And it improved their game tremendously. It is encouraging to see such great efforts done by a federation. Kazakhstan Hockey Federation uh, helped with the development and promotion of hockey, not only for themselves, but for their neighbors. A prime example of selflessness and also fair play. These kinds of actions from KHF have encouraged and motivated Tajikistan so much that their school activities and their youth activities are now at the all time high for their nation. Distinguished members, ladies and gentlemen, three further awards are yet to be presented. The Diploma of Merit and Order of Merit for their distinguished service for exceptional achievement and contribution to hockey will be presented. 
The awardees for the Order of Merit are Dr. Michael Green, a former national member of the German team and player for Harvestel Huda, THC in Hamburg. Michael competed at two Olympic Games and was named FIH Player of the Year in 2002. Michael loves that hockey, that hockey is a dynamic and innovative sport that generates friendships across the globe. Michael was until November 2016 chair of the FIH Athletes Committee. He has been at the FIH Executive Board since 2016. He was re-elected to the FIH Executive Board at the 46th Congress in New Delhi, India. Michael Green's term will come to an end at Congress, at this Congress, and on behalf of the FIH, the hockey family and the awards panel, I would like to thank Michael for his commitment and dedication to hockey and wishing him all the best for the future. Our next awardee is Shabazz Ahmed, widely recognized as one of the greatest hockey players ever in the history of our sport. Shabazz made over 300 appearances for Pakistan and was named player of the tournament at both the 1990 World Cup in Lahore and the 1994 World Cup in Sydney, where he captioned the green shirts to the title, where he captained, sorry, where he captained the green shirts to the title. He also claimed an Olympic bronze medal at the Barcelona 1992 Games. He has been an FIH executive board member since 2018. Like Michael, it will be Shabazz's last term as an EB member. And again, on behalf of the FIH, the entire hockey family, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Shabazz for his invaluable role in the world of hockey and wish him all the best for the future. Our next awardee is Mr. Sarinda Dillon. Mr. Sarinda Dillon embarked this exciting journey starting as a, pro a professional athlete representing Hong Kong in Tokyo Olympic Games in 1964. He also enjoys a unique honor to have represented Hong Kong in 1966, 1970, and 1978 Asian Games. He also participated in Asian Games in 1982 as a coach. Hong Kong men's hockey team. He also contributed three Asian Games at three Asian Games. Jakarta Asian Games in 2018 as tournament director, technical official in Busan Asian Games in 2002, and judge in Doha Asian Games 2006. Our next uh, award is the Diploma of Merit Award. And this goes to Mr. Suban bin Kamal. Mr. Suban has made significant contribution to the development and advancement of hockey in Malaysia, regionally in Asia, and even globally. He is currently the president of Malaysian Hockey Confederation. As a sports executive, along with his current position, he initiated as deputy chairman of Selango Sel Hockey Association in 2009, became the chairman in 2011. He also served Malaysian Hockey Confederation as chairman, holding both roles until 2017. He held the, distinct, the distinctive position in other sports organizations in Malaysia. He also served as deputy chairman of the Malaysian um, FA between 2017 and 2021. Under his leadership, Malaysian Hockey Confederation has hosted at least one international event every year. And Malaysian Hockey has also won the Indo-Asian Cup 2022. 
and the silver medal in Asian Cup 2022. Also important to mention is that under his leadership, the Malaysian men's national team is among the top 10 teams in the FIH ranking. It is also pertinent to mention here that because of his remarkable and amazing efforts towards hockey, he has also been awarded the Asian Hockey Federation Order of Merit in 2022. During the challenging circumstances of COVID-19, he continued online education and event organization for all features of hockey in Malaysia, which could only be possible due to his struggle and passion for the betterment of our beautiful sport hockey with his enthusiastic approach and dedication to hockey. Members, guests, esteemed hockey players, this concludes our awards 2022. At this point, I would like to assure you that uh, the FIH will endeavor to, uh, to ensure that all recipients get their awards in due course at the earliest, of course. Once more, our sincerest congratulations to all the awardees for the invaluable contribution uh, to our sport. Thank you very much for your attention, members. And I give the floor back to our host. I thank you. Thank you, Hessler. Congratulations to all the award winners, as already mentioned. So now we are going to move to point number 16. Uh, and this point, we have no nothing under this point, which is any other item. So there is no any other item, which will mean we can uh, go to point number 17. And for me, this concludes the agenda of the Congress. And now I hand over to our acting president. Acting president, the floor is yours. Thank you, Terry. Uh, before I... Uh, close the meeting, I will ask the new elected president to say few words to our members in this Congress, please. Tayeb, few words to our members in this Congress, please. Tayeb, floor is yours. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, dear hockey friends and global hockey a family. It is great pleasure for me to address a beautiful group of people, world hockey leaders, that who dedicated their lives to keep our hockey shining. I am grateful to all of you for the confidence you gave me today. And I promise you, I will be a message of solidarity. I will bring the FIH together. We have fantastic continental leaders on board. Fumio Ogura from Asia has a fantastic hockey record and a great network in the Olympic movement and also a dedicated leader in, uh, in the continent and also in FIH. Coco, you are doing a fantastic job in Pan America. And it is a great pleasure for us to have a person like you who had a great network of sports other than hockey. And that is benefiting hockey the other way. Maraike, you made a great milestone for gender equality. Equally amazing. I love this title. You were there on every table. You banged the table for the equality and for the rights. And your interaction in the executive board of FIH, we will all learn a lot of things from that and your dedication towards this motion of equal amazing is always be remembered and it will be carry on 
from your side under your uh, leadership. And we will move forward and we will hand join with you to work in future on your mission. Claire, it is, you are a new member to us, but what you did today in a very short time, the most important indicator for a soil, most important indicator for FIH. You and with your team, you made the very nice milestone, a great milestone and great progress on sustainability. And we will join you together in order to achieve all our goals and let FIH put at the first place to save the environment and save the, uh, through this uh, sustainability and go through to every, every item which can develop the social development goals of the United Nations. Ni, thank you very much for joining us. And I really enjoyed your interaction in the last executive board. Now I come to acting president, Sef. You had a lot of values, a lot of messages for us, and we learned a lot from you, your dedication, your leadership, not only in Africa for the global hockey. And this most difficult time, you were there together with Thierry, and we came out of a lot of hurdles, and that showed the capability, capacity you had. I salute you, Acting President Isaf Hammond. I would like to say thanks to our previous leadership. I must say, uh, Dr. Narendra Batra, and also, it's not previous, he's our ongoing colleague, Thierry, you did not leave us with any message that we are impacted with COVID. It was a fantastic journey and you achieved it. And every time when we say that we will grow together, we will have a better stability, it does not come in two days. It has an impact from the previous years. And I really appreciate the leadership from our uh, previous leadership. Thank you for that. We have to keep our legacy. And I would say for my mentor, Teo Aikima, I would like to keep his development legacy alive forever. And that will give us a great guideline to move forward. Mark, you are a fantastic candidate. And for all of you in the world hockey, I was in touch with Mark up to late evening, even yesterday. We had respect for each other, and that is the respect I, in my message to all of you that we need to show. We have to develop the culture of development and respect. Thank you, Mark. Maxi Boku, you saw uh, how to become a champion. I learned from Belgium also, when I, with the uh, third division team, I win the Belgic Cup. And I show the photo that was uh, <clears throat> a good memory for you. Dear leaders of hockey, you are in the best place. And let me convey a short message on behalf of President IOC, Thomas Park, who was the first one to call me and he sent his all the best wishes for hockey, the way we are developing and the way we are moving forward and where the way we are overcoming our challenges. And on your behalf, I had already conveyed my sincere gratitude to Thomas Park, our leader in the Olympic movement. Dear colleague, you are also well-placed. I had received several calls from world leaders and I'm in line to receive two or three calls from head of states. It shows where we are in hockey. And I am really, really grateful and express my sincere gratitude to all of you that you took us up to here. Now, I would like to thank our top nations and our top athletes 
you are our showcase. And the way you had showed a strength of hockey, that is an example for all of us. And of course, I don't want to repeat what I said in my candidature speech, but yes, we have a potential to grow, we have a room to grow, and we have to start our connectivity and try to understand where we are and what we need to do. Thierry, you really gave us a hope, and I would like to appreciate you and your team, a fantastic job, our professional in FIH, they did. And I know I was very nervous, not for the election of FIH. I was nervous how we can keep our World Cup in Bhubaneswar. And you and Saif Ahmed did it very nicely. And it has a huge, huge uh, legacy and also a great contribution to FIH in all manners. I heard in many speeches about transparency. Let me translate transparency in a way that yesterday Terry already announced that we will improve our communication or all those aspects where our national federations need to know and they deserve to know. We will improve that communication and I don't have to repeat those words what Terry uh, mentioned. I think at this moment, I would like to say that we are well-placed international federation. And I assure you that I will bring forward in many avenues where we still have room to develop. I can continue forever. And because hockey is my passion, hockey is, uh, it is something which changed my life. And I am thankful to hockey and hockey family that they have really given me a wonderful life. With these words, I would like to say thanks to all of you for your attention, and I will be with you. I am creating next week a hotline for the FIH president 24 seven, and that every nation can reach to me anytime they want. And that message will be conveyed to through theory to all our departments. And I felt it. I spoke to you. I not only listened, I felt it. And I only conclude that you need attention. And we will be there for you. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Muito obrigado. Mexi Boko. I hand over to Terry and acting president. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and uh, I would like to thank all the attendants, the National Association, Continental Federation, all uh, hockey families here, and I announce that our Congress, 48th Congress, has been closed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um,